Mark, let me just jump in here and ask you uh, about the IMF's take on this, because they are saying, yes, uh, they're shaky markets, especially uh, what we're seeing in, uh, in developing markets and in Europe, but that the U.S. strength is going to rescue us all. Plus, <laughs> you do have Mario Draghi uh, willing to take any step necessary to save uh, that economy from another recession. No? No. I think, actually, uh, we have fiscal policies that are expansionary uh, in most countries because we still have deficits and we have essentially uh, monetary policies that are financing the deficits and i think the principal problem that uh, the current policy makers don't recognize is the fact that the larger the government is the less growth there will be, the less dynamic the economy will be. Mark, and let, so me, my let me ask you a question about that, because that raises a really interesting issue. It's Barry Ritholtz. You and I know each other from various conferences we've attended yes. together. Um, yes, yes. All the things nice you've to talked speak about. To you. Yes. All the things you've mentioned, Europe being weak, China slowing down, those things have all been pretty well known for quite a while. So. The question I have for you is, why Wednesday and Thursday and Tuesday this week? Couldn't this have happened any time in the past year? In fact, in the U.S., it's been something like 700 days since we've had a 10% correction. Yeah. Why now? Why now as opposed to any time in the past year? That is a question I'm very sorry I cannot answer. <laughs> I couldn't answer why the Nasdaq peaked out on March 21st, 2000, and not six months earlier or six months later. These things you just don't know. But the market is signaling something, and I would listen to the market. The market is no longer telling you that it's a straight upward climb. Right. And maybe the Fed can intervene and buy shares. 